Hello, my name is Anthony and welcome to the White Box Geospatial YouTube channel. Today, I'll be showing you a short YouTube tutorial on how to process some LiDAR data using White Box tools and QGIS to perform some quality assurance and quality control checks when colorizing LiDAR data. Today, we're going to be using three tools that are found in the White Box Tools LiDAR Toolbox. The tools that we'll be using today are the Colorize Based on Class tool, and the Colorize Based on Point Return tool. These tools are found in the LiDAR and Remote Sensing tool set extension and require a software license from Whitebox Geospatial to use. To get more information on that, you want to look in the link in the description below where it will um, link you to our website where you can find more information on our extension pricing. Next, we're going to use the LiDAR Colorize tool, which is found in the Whitebox Tools Open Core and is free to use. So let's actually just briefly dive into the tools that we'll be using today. The Colorize Based on Class tool is a tool that sets the RGB color values of an input LiDAR point cloud based on the point classifications. You'll see in the example below it does provide an interesting output and I will actually talk a bit more, more when I run the tool. But basically this tool allows you to set custom classes, custom colors based on LiDAR classes. You can either set these colors based on an RGB or a hex value or you can use the default values from the last specification. Next we will actually dive into the colorize based on point return. So this tool sets the RGB color values of a LiDAR point cloud based on point returns. Specifically it renders only returns, first returns, intermediate returns, and last returns in different colors. Similar to the colorize based on class you can set specific custom colors for each of these returns or you can use the default message which you can see in this example below. Next we will talk about the LiDAR colorize tool. So the LiDAR colorize tool can be used to add RGB color values to the points contained within an input last file based on the pixel values of an overlapping input color image. So you see in this example from the user manual there is a LiDAR file and there is an overlapping color image here and then this is the output from the LiDAR Colorize tool in which it adds the point, it adds the color from the color file to the last point cloud. So we're going to be performing three um, separate tool calls today to each of the tools. And to do this, we're going to be using this data set, which is uh, the University of Guelph campus. And let me just quickly play with the parameters of the Plus IO will actually bump up the particle size a bit to have a little bit of a higher point density. And then we will play around with the colorization to have show height. Uh, we'll use a different color scheme as well. So this is the University of Guelph campus. For those that are familiar with the area, the, you will notice some interesting features, relevant features. This is the football field. Here we have Johnson Green, which is a popular area. Here we have Johnson Hall. And then here we have the uh, University of Guelph Library. So this is a data set we'll be using today uh, to conduct the three separate, uh, to show an example of the three, three separate tools. Um, before I actually head over to QGIS, I just wanted to say that we'll be accessing the white box tools functionality through the white box tools for QGIS plugin. This is the white box geospatial official um, plugin for white box tools. This allows you to use all the tools and functionalities um, of white box tools in QGIS, including the white box geospatial extension, which we are using two of those today. To access this plugin, you can either get it from this website, the QGIS plug, uh, Python plugins repository, or you can download it where you download all your plugins in QGIS in the plugins tab. So now that we're familiar with a little bit of the tools, um, the data set, and how we're going to be accessing white box tools, let's head over to um, QGIS. So in QGIS, really quick, quickly, this is the ortho photo, which we'll use for the LiDAR colorize tool. That we'll, we'll use this uh, later on, but I just wanted to quickly just view this. So the first tool we're going to run today is the colorize based on point returns. I like to search for the tool. Sometimes it's quicker, but you can also access the tools through the toolbox under the white box tools uh, provider. So let's load the colorize based on point returns. So we're going to input the Guelph Campus last file, the intensity blending amount. So this the intensity blending 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 parameter blends RGB with intensity data to allow for a more visually appealing image. Uh, I will actually show you when we actually output the point cloud uh, to Plas IO, but uh, we're just going to leave the default uh, blending uh, the, the default blending parameter of fifty. 
Uh, here is you can set the only returns, the first returns, intermediate return, and last return color. I'm just going to use the default parameters that are used here. But if you wanted to set custom classes, such as maybe you wanted to use uh, red instead of green for um, a first return, you could do so here. And lastly, we are going to set the output file to, we'll call this colorized based on point returns dot class. And we're going to go ahead and run this. One beneficial um, point about this tool is it's pretty, it's fairly quick. That ran in 2.6 seconds. So let's get over and uh, head over to Plus.io and view the output. So I'm just going to browse for the file. And then I'm just going to play around with the parameters once again. I'll change this back to RGB. And I will, so Plus.io comes with a 50% intensity blending automatically, but we only want to use the blending that was ran with the tool. So we're going to decrease the intensity blending all the way to zero. So this is the output from the tool. You can see it just provides a much more uh, visually appealing image than what it was before. So now let's actually just view into some areas in the University of Guelph campus to get an idea of how this tool performed. So let's head over to Johnston Green, and there are some good trees, forests, um, trees that line the Johnston Green. So as you can see, there is a distinct green, magenta, and blue tinge to represent the first return, the intermediate return, and the last return. So you can see here the tops of the trees are represented in a green color for first returns. The purplish magenta color is shown in the intermediate return, and the blue is capturing the last return. So you can think of an example where this quality uh, assurance, quality control task would be beneficial when you're trying to um, get, an, uh, get, an, get a sense of how many, uh, how, the percentage of or how well ground points were classified underneath forest canopy or uh, leaf canopy to get a sense of whether the LiDAR data was captured during leaf on or leaf off conditions. That's just something, uh, a little quick example I could think of to um, show how this tool would be beneficial as in a quality assurance uh, type of analysis when you're visualizing the LiDAR data. Let's check out another example in the University of Guelph campus. Let's head over to the football field. This is a pretty good example. So you see right over here the light stanchion. So the light stanchion, the, the, the top of the light stanchion is getting a green to represent a first return. The middle of the stanchion, which could be maybe a, another light or maybe um, a speaker on the stanchion is getting a intermediate return seen in purple. And then the um, bottom of the stanchion is getting a um, blue color to represent a last return. So that is the so that is the output for the um, color um, colorized based on point return tool. Overall, it's pretty quick, it's effective, and it's really simple to use. And it provides a great output when you are trying to visualize a lidar point cloud to assess how well the point cloud to assess the returns uh, when doing uh, lidar analysis. So let's head over back to QGIS, and we're going to run the next tool. Where we are going to run now the colorized based on class tool. So we're just going to put once again the classified imp, the classified lidar file. We're going to set the intensity blending amount once again to 50%. Here, the color values in this tool in the color is based on class. You do have the option to manually set the value of each class. So if you wanted to set um, uh, a purple value for buildings, you could do that. Or if you wanted to set um, a different color for ground, you could do that. Maybe you wanted to use brown. Um, you could do that here. You can do so by either using an RGB value or a hex value. However, if you don't want to set any specific color value and just you, you want to use the default, which is from the last specification, don't put anything in this parameter, which we are going to do today. We just want to use the, the last spec colors uh, for today. Next, there is this parameter called use unique colors for each building. We're going to set that value to true. So basically, all the buildings in the uh, output LiDAR file will be classified with a unique color instead of one um, static color. Next we're going to set the search distance to about 2.5 and then we're going to save the output file to colorize based on class dot last. And we're going to run the tool. I'm just going to pause the video as well just to save a bit of time. 
So the tool just finished executing once again fairly quick. It ran in about 23 seconds. So let's actually head over to Plas.io to view the output. So I'll actually just reload. Might be a bit easier. And now I'm going to load the colorize based on class. And then once again, I'm just going to use the intensity set to zero. So we're using the intensity value that is specific from the tool itself. And then once again, I'm just going to bump up the, uh, the density of the point clouds. And I'm just going to collapse this. So this is the output of the colorize uh, based on class. As you can see, the buildings in the LiDAR uh, output file are getting a unique color, which is the parameter that we set. This could be very helpful in general when you're trying to distinguish how well the LiDAR classes are actually classified. It's easier to visualize the, the LiDAR point cloud uh, when you're performing a data a quality assurance and quality control with something that is colorized. So you can actually quickly decipher between, okay, maybe this actually is not classified correctly. Maybe this building is actually getting classified as this feature or vice versa. So that is a, extremely helpful and something that this tool accomplishes in a fairly quick and simple manner. Once again, let's have a look in this area. So this area over here, so this is actually a building uh, near Johnson Green, and this is actually the trees that we see surrounding Johnson, Johnson Green. So that is actually doing pretty well to classify um, based on class. Now it is possible that the LiDAR data uh, came, some of these features are being on the tops of the building are being classified as vegetation. Now it could be that there are some shrubbery on the tops of these buildings uh, and that's why they're getting classified but it also could be um, a little bit of an error in the uh, in the LiDAR, classif uh, LiDAR classification as well. Another feature you can see here is that the this is very common sometimes uh, there is well, not very common, I would say, but there is a, a smoke stack in the University of Guelph campus, and there's actually smoke that is being uh, that is coming out of the smoke stack, and that's being classified as uh, vegetation. So this is an example where you know you may actually need to do some data um, data quality assurance and checks to see uh, to see something like this, maybe from a uh, um, a non-colorized lidar file. You won't be able to see uh, this and see this error that in which that this this feature is being classified incorrectly. So once again, this is a pretty quick and helpful tool when you're trying to visualize LiDAR data to perform some quick quality assurance and quality control checks. It's easier to visualize the color in these features and see if there's any of the classes that are maybe being misclassified or some features that are being underrepresented. So let's head over back to QJS and we'll run the last tool for this uh, tutorial. So let's run the the LiDAR, the LiDAR colorize tool. So let's actually just quickly load that. So the LiDAR colorize tool. So the point cloud that we see in the example is was not captured with imagery. So there is no associated RGB values in the raw data set. So many times it may be possible you may want to use a historical orthophoto to associate each point in the LiDAR data with an RGB value. So that is kind of that is what we're doing today. We're going to be associating um, the points in the LiDAR uh, file from the University of Gulf campus with this Orso photo. So this image was collected in 2015 while the LiDAR data was collected in 2018. So there is a little bit of a temporal difference uh, between these two data sets. And we're just going to call this test color rise dot last. And let's actually run that. Once again, I'm just going to pause the video. So the tool ran in 2.5 seconds, which is Really quick, uh, let's head over to Q, um, Plas.io to view the output. Let's just reload. And I will load the test colorize. And once again, I will just customize the parameters a bit more. So I will drop the intensity to zero. And I will bump up the density to something a little bit higher and I will collapse. So 
one very in, important uh, example when you're using the LiDAR colorize tool is as a result of coloring the data, this um, you may find that there are certain features that appear in the image with no point expression, such as cars. So let's head over to the parking lot to maybe see if we see this example. So as you can see here, we are at the University of Guelph parking lot. Just going to maybe bump up the particle size just a bit more. So example here is these features, these cars that appear in the that appear in this image aren't actually in the image. The color is there, but the actual point expression of the LiDAR isn't there. You can see because they appear extremely flat flat. So this is an example where some of the objects, um, even though they're it sorry, the point expression of the LiDAR data, it's not captured in the LiDAR, but it's captured in the orthophoto. This could be a result of the large temporal difference between the two data sets. And another example would be there when it's in the, um, when the point expression is in the LiDAR, but it's not in the orthophoto. So you can see over here, we have these uh, blank spaces over here in the parking lot. So these are, this is an example where cars would actually be in the LiDAR, but they're not in the orthophoto. So uh, the point expression is in the LiDAR, but the color is not in the orthophoto. So that's just one example of how you can use the LiDAR colorize tool to provide as a way of colorizing the data so you can find whether certain objects appear in the image or whether they appear in the LiDAR data set. That is just one example of this tool. Overall, the University of Guelph uh, provides a great stunning, uh, stunning LiDAR real-world representation of the La University of Guelph campus from using a LiDAR point cloud. And that concludes the tutorial in this video. So thank you very much for watching this video. If you have any questions, feel free to ask them down below. Please don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our YouTube channel for more content. Thanks for watching.